Okay, let's take a look at Petite View. Petite View is an alternative distribution of view optimized for sprinkling in little bits of interactivity into your apps. It's great for existing HTML pages or server rendered apps like Laravel. If you're familiar with Alpine, think of it like that, but it tries to follow view syntax and functionality as much as possible. So I have a blank Laravel app here. Let's go ahead and install it and play around. So down here, we can make use of the CDN. So let's grab this. Let's open up our welcome blade and let's just paste it in here. So we have defer, so it waits for the HTML to load. And we also have init, which tells petite view to initialize elements with V scope on them. So here we have the obligatory counter example. So let's take a look at that working in our app. So let's just put this down here somewhere. Let's find a good place to put it. How about after this, I believe this is the logo. So we'll put it here somewhere. Is this a good place here? Okay, so that's a good place to put it. We can get rid of this. And we can get rid of this too, I guess. So it's in the middle. Okay, so that's fine. Maybe this too. Okay. So let's paste in our counter example. And let's take a look at what's going on. So if you're familiar with Alpine, this should look very familiar to you. Let me just put this in a span. So vscope is similar to xdata. And what this does is initialize this div and all of its scope as a component. And here's where you also define your state. So in this case, we have a variable called count and any elements within this div and the div itself has access to this count. So in this case, we have a button that increments the count. So we use the at click event handler, which comes from view. We increment the count here and then we display it here. But since we're using Laravel, we have to use at to escape the double curlies, or we can make use of vText, which is also in view and will also work in petite view. But we'll stick to this and this should work. So if we open up our browser, refresh, increment, there is our counter. So let's take a look at toggling the visibility of components, which in my opinion is one of the best use cases for Alpine, or in this case, petite view. So things like modals or dropdowns are things you can implement with toggling the visibility of certain DOM elements. So let's make another div here and let's add vscope and let's add a piece of state called visible. So let's say visible is true by default. Okay. And let's add a button to toggle the content. So let's say button. Again, we'll do add click. And we'll just flip the Boolean here. So visible equals not visible. And let's say toggle. And underneath is where the content would go. So if this were a drop down, this is where you would implement the drop down and the styles for it. I'm not going to do any styles here, but the content would go here. So content here. And from here, we can make use of either V show or V if to show this content. I'll make use of V show here and show it when it's visible. Take a look at that. There we go. We have the content here and it is toggling. Again, I'm not doing any styling in this video, so I apologize for how it looks, but the functionality is there. So if you were to pretend this is a drop down, usually you'd want to hit escape and hide that drop down when it's open. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's add that on the button here. Let me just rearrange this. And we want to listen for the key down event. So whenever you press a key, so key down, and we can make use of views modifiers here. So listen for the escape key. And whenever that happens, we can do visible equals false. So now let me just refresh this. If I toggle this and I hit escape, it should hide the content. So I'm going to hit escape here and it does work. Now, if you want to listen to this event on the entire window, for example, if I were to click off of this button and I hit escape, it won't work because the button is not focused. In Alpine, you could add a handy dot window modifier and that would listen on the entire window. And as of right now, you can't do that in petite view, but we can add this functionality manually if we make use of lifecycle hooks. So let's say mounted. So when this component is mounted, we can add an event listener manually. So let's do that. 
So let me just format this. Just say window dot add event listener. And we're listening for the key down event. And we have a function event. Okay. And here is where we can listen for that key. So if event dot key equals escape, then go ahead and close it. So we can do visible equals false. Now this should work on the entire window. So let's try this again. So if I toggle it, but click off of the button and hit escape, it still works. Now another handy feature in Alpine, which is not yet in petite view, is the ability to click off of it. So try to picture a drop down here, you want to click off of it, and then you want it to hide. So if you take a look at the discussions in petite view, someone actually asked this question. And again, there's no support as of yet. But you can make a custom directive. And you can see how to do that here. I'm not going to do it in our example, but take a look at this discussion if you want to see how to do it. Okay, let's take a look at another feature here. So let me just make a new div here after this. And I'm going to put an in input type equals text here. So let me just save that. And it is here, but you can't see it. And what I want to do is press the slash button or forward slash and have this focus. So this is a pretty common pattern across several sites like the Laravel site where you can hit slash and have this search input focused. So let's try to do that. So what we need is a reference to this DOM element and we can make use of refs for that. So we can say ref equals search. Or we can actually make this input type equals search. And let me just clean this up again. And again, we can make use of the mounted hook to listen for the slash button and focus this DOM element. So it's almost the same as this. So I'm just going to grab this. We want to listen to it on the window. So we're doing the same thing. But now we're listening for the slash key. So we can do slash here. And here we can grab the refs. So refs, dollar sign refs, dot search, which is what I named the ref. And we can just use dot focus to focus it. So let's see if this works. So I'm going to hit slash and it doesn't seem to focus. All right, I forgot to initialize it as a petite view component. So we have to do V scope here. And now hopefully this should work. So let me just refresh, I'm going to hit slash here. And it does focus. Looks like it types in a slash here. So I think we can do prevent default here. And that should not type the slash in. Try again, I hit slash, and it does focus. So if you have slightly larger apps and don't want to inline your variables and your functions, you can make use of root scope. So let's take a look at this example, and then we'll create a quick one of our own. So if we define a script type equals module, and define all of our logic in here, we can make use of it in any of our components in here. So let's take a look at this example here. Let's grab this. Let's put it in our script up here. So we'll put it after here. Let me just reinvent this. So now we're exposing all of this functionality into any petite view component that wants to use it. So when we do it this way, we no longer have to do init in here. So let's get rid of that. And let's take a look at the markup for this. So let's paste this in in our app somewhere. So after all of our components here, let's add it after this one. Okay. And again, we have to put at here. But let's make use of v text instead, just to show you that that works as well. So v text equals count, and v text equals plus one. We can get rid of this and this. And again, it's just a counter. But now we're making use of root scope here. So we have zero and the plus one here. So with that knowledge, let's quickly make a to do app so we can demonstrate V model and V4 working as well. So in our root scope here, let's add some new state, I'm just gonna put it underneath here, I'm gonna paste it in, we have our to do, which is what the user will type into the input box, we have our to do's array, and we have our to do ID. Let's go ahead and add a method for adding a to do. So let's implement that quickly. Let's say add to do. So this is 
going to push to the to do's array. So this uh, to do's dot push, or you can make use of the spread operator if you like, but push is fine for our case. So we're going to push in a new to do object. The ID is this dot to do ID. The title is going to be the to do variable, which we'll use v model on. So this dot to do and completed is false. Okay. We also want to increment the to do ID. So this dot to do ID plus plus, and we want to clear the text input. So this dot to do equals empty string. Okay, so let's save that. Let's go ahead and go into our markup and add it down here. So after all of this, let's create a new one. Div, let's make sure to add vscope on it. So first we have our input where the user can type in the new to do. Actually, let's do that later. Let's just v4 over the existing to dos. So say div, again, if you're familiar with the view, this should be exactly the same. So we're just looping over our to dos. So to do in to dos, we need a key. So that's why I have to do dot ID. And in here we can output the name of the to do. So let's just put it in a span. And let's go ahead and output that. So it's to do dot title is what I named it. And hopefully that should work. Let's give that a try it should render our to do's and I'm getting an error unexpected token get. I think I put the function in the wrong place. So let me go back up here. Yeah, so the method should go down here. So let me grab this add to do and put it where the methods go. Let's try that again, refresh, and it does show that one. Let's work on this input here. Let's add a V model. So let's look for that. So we can just add V model in here to sync that variable up with our to do. So I named it to do. And we can listen for the key down dot enter. And we can call the add to do method when enter is pressed and this should work. Okay, adding another and it looks good. So yeah, definitely check out petite view and the documentation on the GitHub page. Again, it's still pretty new at the time of this recording. And I really think there's a good spot for this in the view ecosystem for apps that are primarily server rendered and just want some interactivity sprinkled into them. So again, take a look at the docs. There is a section here which shows the features that it does not support as of yet. For example, not supported transitions, which I hope they do support. I believe there is a section here that says they might have a plugin or an external plugin. Right here it says no transition system, but maybe an opt-in plugin in the future. So yeah, give it a try. I believe there's even more examples here in the examples folder and see if you like it and see if you can use it within your apps.